among the adab of dua, hopefully the dua will be accepted, is to look for some circumstances. Like when the rain is raining, that's a time, inshallah, for dua to be accepted. When iqama is being called, or between adhan and iqama, when someone who was fasting is about to break his fast, or when you are in sujood. Like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ The closest the servant will be to his Lord is when he or she is performing sujood. So take advantage of that time and make dua. <coughs> and while someone is traveling, among the adab to perform dua is to face the qibla if possible is to make dua with a lower voice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that ud'u rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufya perform your dua ask of your lord tadarru'an in a state of humility and in a state of trying to hide your dua just between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are so many benefits in doing so there are so many benefits in making that dua personal, just between you and your Lord. It's not necessarily a dua that is necessarily open and public and in front of everyone. For there are events for that and there are circumstances for the other. There are, there are states of dua that are zahira, apparent, and there are states that are inside. There are adab for someone to be in a state of tahara, if possible, for someone to be in a state of uh, khushu'u al-harakat, for someone to be in a proper place, although you can make dua in any place that is tahir, that is clean. However, there are more important states that the person would really look for. Those are the inner states, the state of the mind and the state of the heart that the heart will be in a state of ikhlas. One of the most essential states, one of the most essential qualities that are needed for dua to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person will be in a state of ikhlas, in a state of sincerity. So his or her dua, inshallah ta'ala, will be accepted. A state of ikhlas that means it is truly ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are not asking anyone or you are not showing off through performing your dua. You are doing it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a state of tadarru and khushu' humbleness, humbleness and fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Raghbatan wa rahbah, seeking the pleasure and the giving from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but being afraid also of his punishment and also among other qualities that are needed in our dua is you would like to have you have you would like to have azm in your dua you don't perform dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say ya Allah give me that if you want that is not appropriate in asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yu'jizuhu shay there is nothing that Allah cannot do so ask and be consistent and be be clear, be very f firm in what you are asking for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give and can do anything He wants. <clears throat> and that the person would be having a great hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer this dua. Even though the person may be a sinner, maybe the person is really, uh, is really drowned in many of the things that are not appropriate that should not keep him away from asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he will answer even dua uh, the, 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 the dua of mazloom of the person who is being transgressed against even if that person is not a believer even if that person is not a believer a person who is a mushri but mazloom transgressed against ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will answer such a dua let alone a believer who may be a sinner uh, 
it is recommended that you start your dua with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a proper adab. You don't just go straight and ask. No, you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you perform your dua. And then you end it with making salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is being said, some of the ulama and some of the salihun said that when you start your dua with praising Allah and salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and end it with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have haya that he will accept the salawat but he will reject that which is in between. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah respond positively to that dua. When we perform dua, we would like to avoid we would like to avoid being in a state of ifm or in a state of aggression, transgression in dua or in a state where a person maybe is severing, is severing the ties of the kinship. For that is also stated in one hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a person, his or her dua will be accept, accepted as long as they avoid Ithm and qati'atur rahim. Avoiding being sinful in dua. How a person can be sinful in dua? Yes, sometimes you ask that which you don't deserve. A person will ask, Ya Allah, make me a prophet. Make me a messenger. Well, that's not possible. So, things that are normal for human beings to have, but don't ask things that are not appropriate for you. Similarly, qati'atur rahim that you ask in your dua a harm to be done to one of your relatives or to one who does not deserve it. That is not right. That is not right. One of the key, when a person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ud'u Allah li an akuna mustajab al-da'wa. Pray for, for me that my dua will be accepted. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded to him and said, responded to him and said, أطعم or أطب مطعمك تكون مستجاب الدعوة. Consume that which is halal, you, your dua will be accepted. So that's the key, my dear brothers and sisters. Consume that which is halal is not necessarily only food. But that means in everything in our life that we consume, hopefully it is coming from a rizq that is halal. If that's the case, then inshallah, dua will be mustajab. And there are many, many other adab that are appropriate. Now, the brother is telling me I have five minutes. Although the note that I got before was supposed to be 30 minutes. So did I finish my 30 minutes? I am not sure I did that. But anyway, I will try, inshallah, to uh, limit myself to the time that I have. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran gave us many examples. Gave us many examples of dua. First of all, to teach us how to perform dua. Gave us examples of dua that are to make. You find the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, the end of Surah Ali Imran, and many, many other places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught his messenger Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam how to perform dua. And you find so many places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, قُلْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ And in many, many other places. عَلَى لِسَانِ كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ There are many prophets and messengers where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned their names and their stories and gave us examples from their ad'iyah. From Ibrahim alayhi salam, from Adam alayhi salam. When Adam and Hawa, our mother Hawa and our father Adam, when they made the mistake and then they came back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they made dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. Similarly, Ibrahim and Nuh and, and many, many others, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and Khatam al Nabiyin, Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. All of them perform dua. I will just give two examples. I will just give two or three examples. One example is the example of Yunus alayhi salam. When, when Yunus was swallowed by the whale, and he was in the belly of the whale, and he was in dhulumat, darknesses after darknesses. But then, 
He turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, La ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni kuntu min al -dhalimeen. La ilaha illa ant, there is no God but you. Exalted you. Maybe you exalted. I was among the transgressors. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aqqaba ala thalik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said after this statement that Allah najjahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And so we will save the believers. And it is recommended that this dua, that whoever made this dua, inshallah, as long as the conditions of dua are being met and there are no obstacles being created for that dua to be accepted, then hopefully, inshallah, such a dua will be accepted. It is reported among some of the companions like Anas and Umm Salama and others that most of the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be or would include Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar That's why it is recommended my dear brothers and sisters you know if you don't know a long detailed dua go to those ad'iyah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that are of jawami' al kalim they are of jawami' al kalim they are few words but contain a lot of meaning contain khayru dunya wal akhira the goodness of this life and the goodness of the coming one like when rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say allahumma inna nas'aluka al afwa wal afiyah fi dunya wal akhira what else is left oh allah we seek of you afia that is safety serenity peace in dunya and akhira and many many others for example yusuf alayhi salam when he when he was also making dua and he and he said rabbi qad ataytani min al mulki wa allamtani min ta'wil al ahadith fatir al samawati wal ard anta waliyyi fi al dunya wal akhira tawaffani muslima wa alhiqni bis salihin tawaffani muslima wa alhiqni bis salihin take me to you as a Muslim, as a person who submits himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make me rich those who are righteous, those whom you love. And many, many other examples of dua that time does not permit to go through them. So again, I thank you for listening and for your attention. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to the words of admonition and follow the best of them. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.